Alright, welcome back guys to another episode of Will It Pyrolysize. In the last videos we said we we're gonna try some wood chips next time. Here I got a bucket full of pine bark. It is worth mentioning that different types of wood have different calorific values, different types of ad atomic structures, so it may be worth trying pine, hickory, oak, different types, but for now, this will do, right? So, with that being said, I'm going to load her up, and I will also mention, in my last video, we had the coffee going about for six hours, and that's just not nearly long enough, primarily just because the agitator in this reactor, which is that blender looking thing, doesn't really work, so there's no way to agitate the material to get it to be covered better and be penetrated better by microwaves, so it takes on average about 10 to 12 hours. Uh, to get a good level of even carbonization. So anyways, here's my theory on this, right? Why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this to show uh, my hypothesis, to test my hypothesis, and that is that any and all organic matter can be restored to its basic atomic components and used as energy under pyrolysis particularly microwave pyrolysis, because that's what this type of pyrolysis reactor is, but really any type of pyrolysis. But anyways, that's my hypothesis, that we can turn any organic matter into fuel, into gaseous and liquid fuel through this process. And as usual, if you're new here, microwave pyrolysis is a little bit different from regular pyrolysis. We need to add a catalyst to this, so that way... It's not only the water in the wood that's being absorbed by microwaves, but this microwave catalyst or susceptor will get superheated. So I use carbon for this, and all this carbon is is from previous reactions. So you see this right here? This is just carbon. So usually in most of my reactions, that's all that's left over in the end. Um, that's inside the reactor, just this black product, which has tons of uses, tons. Next thing I want to mention, my theory on the gas product is there'll be a lot of gas, but I believe the gas product will be less calorific than the gas product from plastic, and that's because it'll be composed of mostly methane, hydrogen, and short-chain hydrocarbons. Now, as we know, since plastic is a product of crude oil, the hydrocarbon chains are longer in plastic, therefore making it more energy dense in the gaseous fuel. But really, we'll see when we get there. I don't have any type of chromatography to know, so I really won't know, but that's just my theory. All right, we got the lid on. Last step we need to do is flush out any oxygen. Pyrolysis, unlike incineration, involves no oxygen, meaning no combustion, meaning no flame, meaning no dioxins. So how do we do that? Well, here I have a compressed tank of syngas, or gas from previous reactions, which will be make this an inert atmosphere. I'm going to pump this in. Go ahead and turn it on. Here it flowing through. And I know that this thing is working because I will come over here to this in, this output here. The gas will go through all this filtering system, and it will come out here, and I should be able to light this on fire and yep there we go so now we know the gas is coming through oxygen is being pushed out now we'll get it on the gas will be stored and collected between these three yoga balls nice all right, it's been about four hours, actually about five, and what I have noticed is, first of all, if we take a look at the gas, it's not as much as plastic produces, but it also is a different shade. The plastic sin gas is more white, it looks like a cloud, while this is like, it looks almost more like smoke. Now it still is flammable, the flame is almost invisible, like you can't see the flame at all, but it's there. Yeah, I can feel it. Um, at least in the daytime it is. And then another thing I noticed is the water content in here. So under here there's this drip pan that uh, it catches any oil or water that seeps its way through the 
the agitator and most of this is water right now but there's a lot of it normally I barely ever get any oil dripping through right there's tons of it um, so I also want to see our oil yields in the first condenser here I wonder how much oil we will get or water so let's see Look at that. Okay, so we, okay, interesting. So you saw in the beginning, it was like mostly water, but then it was like, it seemed like it was a mix of water and tar or something. And at the very end, it looked like pure oil. See, if I pour this into here, you can get a, a better look at what's water and what isn't. You know, usually water is the clear stuff. So there's definitely some oils in there. I can tell by the viscosity of it, as well as some of the bubbles in there. Definitely is some oil, but most of it is water. I wonder if it's flammable. Okay, so like there's some sludge left at the bottom here. Let's see if it's flammable, you know. Because I do wonder the value of this. So you see? Let's see. Uh, no. Probably too much water in there. Um, so that's that, uh, the gas, like I said, it's been running for about five hours, usually in the other reactor by five hours, this exercise ball would be completely filled, even though I have three of them, I only have one with an open port, and it's about, uh, under a quarter, so very slow and very little gas production compared to plastic, overall I just say less energy dense in general. Which makes sense. I mean, it wood literally is less energy dense. You know, if I fill up this whole reactor with the same amount of plastic as I did wood, I'm going to get tons more energy out of that than I am with this wood. So, all right. It's been running for a couple hours. The yoga ball is about, I would say, halfway there by now. You know, it's it definitely has shape, but it's not firm by any means. But anyway, I unplugged it. I have it going through this copper tube. And now that it's darker out... Let's take a look at the flame. So let me go ahead and open her up. And let's light her and see what it looks like. Oh, let me turn this flashlight off. So as you can see, the typical beautiful flame. Put a little bit of pressure on the yoga ball there. See the flame gets a little bit bigger, but the typical beautiful blue. I will say there are more yellow elements. You know, when we have the, the pyrolysis gas, from plastic coming out of it and nighttime at some points it can be completely pure blue you know not no no red on it or no orange or white at all um so that's interesting i don't know the chemistry behind all that but i do want to mention you know a lot of papers and a lot of things in general when it comes to pyrolysis are always so focused on the oil you know they're like you know we got this much oil we use this catalyst to get this much oil blah 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 oil this oil that and i think in my opinion, that's not the proper focus. I think the focus should be on the gaseous product. Why? Because, first of all, when it comes to the oil, you may get so many liters of oil, but in most applications, you can't use the oil unless you clean it up anyway, right? While this gas, look at it. Look at it. It's already clean. Why? Because I had it going through this filtering system as it went through the reactor. So it's kind of like, well, we get what we want to get from it right away don't have to do any extra refining and on top of that guess what one of the great viewers I've spoken with many times he has shared with me information on a way to turn this sin gas to be able to get like the methane out of it and turn it into gasoline gaseous products so think about that if we can get the oil if we can make oil or gasoline or diesel out of this gas and that works perfectly because I barely get oil from this anyway, but with the oil I do get, it can be used as a waste oil burner to run the reactor, or it could be refined into gasoline itself, blah, blah, blah. But in microwave pyrolysis, we get more gas than anything else, right? Um, when we do get cond condensate, it is mostly water. Now, I don't have a proper condensing system. I need to have two condensers, not just one. So maybe that will change when I update the system. But for now, I like to focus on the gas. I've always been more focused on the gas. 
Um, I, I just always saw it as more practical, especially for, for little things. You know, I feel like it's way easier to hook up gas to a propane tank or a propane burner and cook something than try to cook something with the oil that comes from it. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's all it is. That's what I wanted to say. Um, and so far it's looking really good. I do want to also see. So as you can see, this is a completely unfiltered raw gas. This is pretty much the exact same type of flame. Blue with uh, elements of orange. So, I guess as a control, in this tank here, I do have um, pure syngas from plastic pyrolysis. Let's light this and see how this looks. Oh, beautiful, man. I guess it's the same thing. That blue with that white. Like I said, at some points I've had it pure blue before. But man, it's such a beautiful flame, though. It's so beautiful. I, I mean, I'm, I'm always hot in a daze just looking at it man wow it's the next morning let's open her up and see what she looks like all right there we have it Look at that. Very good carbonization. I love the sound of when something is carbon. It almost sounds metallic. As it just falls. You can see they still retain some of their shape. But since it's carbon at this point. It's very brittle. This is biochar. So we made biochar. But we also got energy out of it. Pretty cool. Look at that. Really nice even carbonization. Now. When I did get lower. The very bottom wood chips, they did not break down. I, I kind of expected that. Like I said, we don't have agitation in this reactor, so it just makes sense, right? The microwaves can't go down that deep to the very bottom of it. Um, so that, that happens with everything. So I don't see that as a problem with the pyrolysis as much as a problem with just this reactor. Uh, hopefully in our next reactor, when we do have a proper agitator, that will be the case. But you see of the areas that were in contact with the microwaves really nice and even carbonization all the way around um so that's what happens when you pyrolysize wood chips you get a, you get a decent amount of gas you get a lot of water and you get some oil slash tar uh, this is the total amount that i collected here um you can see it kind of is really sludgy let's see if there's any more left over just residual Sometimes there is. Yeah, you see just a little bit of water left in there. A lot of the water ended up in this drip pan because it condensed within the reactor. Um, and I compressed the gas that was in the yoga ball. It got the tank up to about uh, 40 PSI. Which I know that really isn't a good measurement <laughs> of how much there was, the total volume. But um, yeah, so that there we have it. Good to see. So... That goes to show that, yes, wood can be pyrolysized. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to pyrolysize grass clippings and see what happens then. Also, there's potential for two different videos. One where I pyrolysize like dry grass clippings. Another one when I pyrolysize green grass clippings. Because, you know, there is a, a difference in water content and also even in um, the chemicals properties of it you know when it's green it might have more nitrogen than when it's dried and brown so that's what we're going to be doing next thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time take care leave any suggestions in the comment by the way on what i can paralyze next and i will read them